In this video we will talk about the environment. Now when a program gets executed on a modern operating system, usually it gets some arguments with it. Um, those arguments, here highlighted in red, um, are something that are very interesting when we want to write a normal program where the user can actually sort of interact with it or set certain options. So the question is, how do we access those arguments? But when we're talking about the environment, another thing comes to mind, which are environment variables, uh, since they are also supplied to the program and are sometimes very important. And then also we should talk about what about exit codes? Since when a program um, returns and, and gives back the control to the operating system, it usually returns with an exit code uh, telling us whether it was successful or not. And well, those are the topics that we want to talk today. How to, well, solve those three problems. Okay, so we want to write a program which we will call greet. And greet, when supplied with a greeting, will greet the user. Now, the user, the, the name of the user, should be taken from the user variable of the environment variables. If no such a environment variable exists, then no user to greet would be something that the program could put out. But also we should ask ourselves, well, what about help texts? Since those are sort of standard practice in um, normal programs, we should have those too. Okay, so the solution to the problem are those two modules, system.environment and system.exit. Let's look at system.environment first. Well, when a program is executed like this, where you have a program name and then four arguments, normally in most operating systems and uh, programming languages, the arguments are all of the, um, well, all of the different words that you see uh, in front of you. So prog name, the name of the program, would be part of the arguments. Now, we have a function, getArgs, which is an IO monad uh, or an IO action with a list of strings, yet it only returns the arguments, not the program name. This is not standard and other programming languages do it differently, but hey, that's just the Haskell way. If you do want the proc name, then, well, you can get it with a function called getProcName. Again, this is an IO action. So that's about it when it comes to arguments. The environment variables, so for example, this is uh, an example of some environment variables, you can get with getEnvironment, where you get a list of string tuples, which are the tuples in the environment. So user and some name would be one tuple and term and x term would be another tuple. But getting the whole environment and then filtering it Mm, that's not so elegantly, so there is one other function that is much nicer, which is lookup env, which means look up the environment. And in this case, what you can do is you can look up a key, so maybe the key user in this case, and you get back an IO action with a maybe of a string. So either you get nothing or a just of the found value. It is also very important to note that there are two functions, with args and with prog name, that allow you to change the environment locally for an IO action. So what does that mean? Well, let's assume that you call the function with args with an empty list and some IO action. The IO action you get back is an IO action that if it calls get args, simply gets the empty list or whatever list you've supplied. And it is uh, similar with prog name. Now, why would that be helpful? Well, maybe you want to pre-filter the arguments or maybe you want to change the program name for some reason. Then you can do that with those two functions. I think that's a really nice uh, functionality that not many um, programming languages have. Okay, so now we've talked about um, how to interact with the environment, um, how do we exit? Well, 
there is one data type that we need to look at, which is exit code. So it either has an exit success or an exit failure. Now, an exit failure you should always call uh, with some int uh, bigger than zero. And then, well, you can uh, call a function called exit with that you supply such an exit code and you get back an IO action. Well, you actually just exit the program at this point. So this IO action doesn't do much, it simply exits the program. There are two built-in I.O. actions uh, if you want to, you know, not care for this uh, special data type, uh, exit failure and exit success, which you could always call and they just use some uh, failure code or success code. Well, there is only one success code, but um, they just do it without actually using this uh, data type. And then there is the function die, which um, gets a string and then an IO action. What it does, or it returns an IO action, what it does is it prints the message you've supplied it to standard error and then uses exit failure. So if you have some, you know, huge problem in your program and you want to notify the user, hey, we have to stop here for some reason, you could use die. Okay. So... Now that we've talked about how uh, the functions in those modules work, uh, we want to take a look at how to put it all together. Okay, so here we are in a Finnish program, uh, in the Finnish greet program. Let's just take a look at it. So um, at first we import some, well, functions, in this case system exit, system environment, and we also need uh, the maybe function later for the lookup of the environment. Uh, then we have two functions or two IO actions, print help and print version, that help us print the help text and the version text. Um, here we see get proc name in action, where we get the program name from the IO action. Okay, so now let's look at the main function here or the main IO action and see what's um, happening here. So, of course, at first we get the arguments, get arcs, and then we check if a minus h or minus minus help or minus v or minus minus version is an element of the arcs, because in this case we either need to print the help text uh, or the version text. Now, it's of course important to then uh, use exit success, because we want to exit, uh, well, as a success. It, it was a success uh, because the user wanted to have the help text or the version text and we did that and well then everything worked fine. Else though we want to go to this main act with the arguments that we have. We do not have to pre-filter them so we don't have to filter out anything um, since if there is a minus v or minus h we already have exited the program. Okay. So, of course, if there is no greeting, then, um, so if the arguments are empty, uh, again, the program name is not part of the arguments, then we complain that we need a greeting, and then we print help so that the user actually knows uh, what they should be doing, and then we use exit failure, since this was actually, well, a failure. We also, if we didn't want to print the help here, we could have used die for this, but, well, whatever. And if there are arguments, then we use the unwords function in order to take a list of strings and put them together with uh, spaces between them. And then we do the lookup of the user. So the name in this case is a maybe. It's, um, it's a maybe string. So what we then do is we use the maybe function, which gets a default value which is the no user to greet sort of, um, well, error message. And if there is a name within this maybe, we construct a new greeting from that name. And then in this case, we put it to put string ln and just uh, output it to the user. So let's look at this program in action. Now I have compiled this program and I've called it greet. How to compile a program we will take a look at in the next video probably. 
Uh, and as you can see, when we, uh, you know, want a help text, even if we have, you know, other arguments, we get the help text. It's uh, similar uh, with the version where help has precedence over the version, but if there is a minus V or a minus minus version in here, then we get the version text. It's all fine. So, okay, let's look at how this program should normally work. So let's first design um, or set uh, a better name as a username. So in this case, I will call myself Haskell user. And let's call greet with a, well, normal hello. And we get hello Haskell user. Now using unwords on the other arguments uh, has the effect that uh, if you now, you know, use more words like uh, hello again, my Haskell user, then uh, you get all of this uh, put into the greeting, which is nice. Okay, so now we have to take a look at problems like having no greeting, but that of course works, right? We get the usage and everything uh, works correctly. But now the question is, well, what happens when we have no user variable? So now uh, within our environment, there is no user variable anymore. So now if we have a correct call to greet with a greeting, we get no user to greet. So lookup env, the lookup of the environment, worked just ex uh, as expected. So if we now put a, uh, well, user variable again into our environment, which we will again call Haskell user, it of course works again. Okay. So if there are any questions, then uh, please feel free to ask them in the comments. Uh, and anyways, thanks for watching.